My name is Hans van der Krust. In this video I am going to explain the theory of the surface energy balance. After this lecture you will be able to describe the surface energy balance, describe the radiation balance, explain the difference between wet and dry conditions, explain the link between the surface energy balance and the water balance. When we look from space at an agricultural area with pivot irrigation, like here in barracks in Spain, we can clearly see that the near-infrared reflection inside the pivots with healthy crops is high. When we look at the land surface temperature image of the same area, we can see that the temperature inside the irrigated pivots with growing crops are much lower than in dry surroundings. In the next slides we will explain this using the surface energy balance. Let's first look at the global mean annual radiation and energy budget of the Earth. Solar radiation provides the main energy input to the Earth atmosphere system. On an annual basis, the extraterrestrial shortwave radiation influx must equal the loss of energy into space in order to sustain the Earth's climate by means of the Earth's energy balance. Incoming solar radiation is lost into space by scattering and reflection from atmospheric gases and aerosols clouds and reflection from the Earth's surface. This amount is controlled by the albedo of the Earth's surface and the atmosphere. Let's have a look at the figure. There we see that KXO incoming is the average annual extraterrestrial incoming solar radiation, which is short wave, and uh, that is 338 watts per square meters, which we set to 100%, so in the rest of the figure we will use percentage. From that amount, there is 19% reflected back from clouds into space, which is KAC arrow up. Also 5% is stored in the clouds by absorption, that's K star AC. Also the particles in the atmosphere reflect back and that accounts for 6% KAA arrow upward. 20% is uh, absorbed by the particles in the atmosphere. Then we have KS upward which is um, the part of the solar radiation that reaches the Earth's surface but is reflected back into space as a result of the Earth's surface albedo. This shortwave radiation balance now results in a net incoming shortwave radiation at the Earth's surface of plus 47%. This net radiation must also be re-radiated into space in order to maintain the Earth's equilibrium energy budget. The absorbed solar radiation is partly radiated back into the atmosphere as longwave radiation which has a net value of minus 18%. And this is the energy because the objects are heated and uh, by the absorption of solar radiation they now emit longwave radiation, which is a function of their temperature and emissivity. The remaining part of the absorbed solar radiation is transferred into the atmosphere through convective transport of sensible heat, which is 5%, and latent heat, 24%. Latent heat is the amount of energy that is required to evaporate water. Sensible heat is the energy used to heat up the atmosphere. Latent heat plays an important role in the hydrological cycle by coupling the energy balance to the water balance. It is the latent heat of vaporization times the actual evapotranspiration. The transport of heat by means of convection is the vertical interchange of heat by currents within liquids and gases. Sensible and latent heat are transported from the Earth's surface into the air as parcels of air, which are called eddies. Since these eddies move in a turbulent matter, the fluxes of sensible and latent heat are called the turbulent heat fluxes. At an annual scale, the soil heat flux, representing the exchange of heat with the subsurface, can be assumed to be zero. The biochemical storage of energy due to photosynthesis is also negligible. Now let's go from the Earth system to a parcel and have a look at the surface energy balance. There the net incoming radiation is separated into the soil heat flux, sensible heat flux and the latent heat flux. Again the soil heat flux is there to heat up the soil, the sensible heat flux to heat up the air and the latent heat flux is for evapotranspiration. In the same way we can make the radiation balance at the level of a parcel, where the net radiation from the sun is the balance between the incoming shortwave radiation minus the outgoing shortwave radiation, 
plus the incoming long wave radiation minus the outgoing long wave radiation. In equations it looks like this. The short wave outgoing radiation is a function of the surface albedo alpha times the incoming short wave radiation. The long wave outgoing radiation is the emissivity of the surface times the Stefan Boltzmann's equation, which is the Stefan Boltzmann constant times temperature to the power of 4. When we substitute this in this equation, we will get that the net radiation equals 1 minus albedo times incoming shortwave radiation plus emissivity of the atmosphere times the incoming longwave radiation minus the emissivity of the surface times the Stefan Boltzmann's constant times the temperature to the power of 4. And from all this we can conclude that the energy balance equals the radiation balance because there are two ways to calculate the net radiation using either the three uh, fluxes, soil heat flux, sensible heat flux and latent heat flux or using the balance between the incoming and outgoing uh, short and long wave radiation. Now let's have a look at the surface energy balance in extreme cases. At a dry limit, when there is no soil moisture or surface water bodies or healthy crops, the latent energy for evapotranspiration equals 0 watts per square meter. And the energy balance reduces to the sum of the soil heat flux and the sensible heat flux, which you see on the left side. In wet conditions, we have a distribution of the energy in soil heat flux, sensible heat flux and latent heat flux. Under some circumstances, the sensible heat flux can become negative and supply extra energy for latent energy. This happens when we have a sharp boundary between a dry area and a wet area. Because this typically happens in an oasis in the desert, we call this the oasis effect. But this is not limited to deserts. It can also happen when we have natural water bodies in arid surroundings, melting snow patches, irrigated fields in arid areas, or irrigated urban lawns and parks. From the previous slides we can now conclude that there is a clear link between the surface energy balance and the water balance. In the calculation of the net radiation we sum up the soil heat flux, the sensible heat flux and the latent heat flux. That latent heat flux is controlled by the moisture and that relates to the water balance equation where the precipitation equals the runoff plus the evapotranspiration plus or minus the change in storage. The evapotranspiration there is the latent energy divided by the latent heat of vaporization, which provides a clear link between the two equations. The theory that you've learned in this video is essential if you want to understand surface energy balance models and the link with the hydrological cycle. The equations also form the basis of constructing surface energy balance models with remote sensing data as an input.